All right, so last time on Danganronpa, Monokuma called us to the gym and he gave us the um, he gave us the picture that had all of the students in it besides Makoto. Now, what does that image mean? Why was everybody but Makoto in that image, even though they swore they never knew each other? Also, why is it that Mukuro was in the image despite nobody at the school remembering that, who she is? Let's go uh, ask our fellow classmates about that little endeavor. Let's go to the archive first and ask Byakuya. I, I would say that talking to the most intelligent person first would be the best course of action. This is it tonight. Credits will roll tonight. I'm excited. Are you? You should be. It's just gonna get. But where the fuck's Byakuya? Wait, what the fuck? Oh. Maybe he's in the spooky chamber. Hey, there he is! I do see he's getting predictable. Oh, Biakia! Uh-oh, he don't look too happy, Chief. Listen, you think we could talk? Biakia? That's enough. I have nothing to talk to you about. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Biakia, wait! Of course he didn't. He just walked away. Why was he acting like that? Like he was purposely trying to avoid me. Remember, Yasuhiro was acting weird too. Ever since Monokuma has called everybody to the gym, everybody's acting weird. Why? Alright, let's go find somebody else. Let's see if there's anybody in the dining hall. That's usually where we used to meet up. Dude, this music is nuts too. But yeah, hopefully everybody's uh, week was good. I might actually... Let me find something here. It's so good. All right, here, let me just... Uh, for this final one... Just to have it archived forever. I'm gonna have the chat uh, right under the screen. So the chat will be archived right here. There you guys go. That way your guys' reactions and stuff will be uh, forever immortalized for the final portion of this. All right, shush. Now it should be up there. Hey, it's Hina! Hina's never mean to us, so let's talk to her. So this is where you've been hiding. Listen, I was hoping to talk to you. Yeah, because Makoto wants to talk to all these people about this image. Because he wants to be like, Hey, why the fuck were you all of you guys together with Mukuro when all of you claim that A, you've never met each other prior to coming to the school, and B, you never even knew who Mukuro Ikusaba was? Now suddenly nobody wants to talk? Tell us, Hina. Hey, Makoto? Uh, sorry, gotta go. What? She ran off so fast, I didn't even have time to ask her to stop. Hina, why? Why won't you talk to me? Hmm. Hmm. Very weird how once Monokuma shows us that image of everybody that nobody wants to talk to us anymore. What has everybody been hiding from Makoto this entire game? Anything? Nothing? Everything? Is Makoto Nayegi the only one that we can trust? The ultimate lucky student? Is everybody else evil? I don't know. Who knows? Everybody knows something. Everybody's acting weird. Yasuhiro's acting weird. Byakuya's acting weird. 
See if we can find... Who's missing? Who's unaccounted for? Kyoko, Toko, is that it? Kyoko and Toko are the only people we have not talked to? Tippy top floor here. Yeah, I mean, Toko's always acting weird, but we should still ask her. Maybe if she's so weird, she might be like more willing to talk to us. I don't know. Oh, no shit. Hey, it's Yasuhiro. What's up, Chief? What's cracking? Hey, hero! Ah! Uh, Makoto! Uh, what's going on with you? Every time I see you, you freak out like that. Uh, um, no, I... No! Uh, sorry, but I'm in a big hurry. Once again, he ran off like a terrified rabbit. Hero, what's wrong? I still wasn't able to uh, talk to him about the note. Oh, shit! That's right, Chet! The last stream? Remember we found that notebook? Remember we found that notebook? It said Yasuhiro's name in it, and there was like writings and plans and shit. For a locker that we didn't have access to till now. He ran like he was afraid of me. Why? Where the hell are we going? Nice. Nice credit card number. If you ever meet a Danganronpa fan, always try Leon's name upside down and backwards as their login password for everything, and you'll probably get in. <laughs> See, I'm not that stupid. I would never do that, because that's obvious. But I guarantee if you meet a Danganronpa fan, go go on their, their Twitch or their email and try it. Just try it. We'll see. I think, think they're clever. Hacking 101. Wait, shh. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I decided to visit the bio lab one more time. And the first thing I saw when I got there <gasps> was her. Passed out. Oh, she, she just, she's just passed out, chat. She's just passed out, or is she? Toko. Why was she in here and why was she passed out? Oh, fuck off. She opened up the fridge with the bodies. T Toko, are you okay? No, no. She's not dead, is she? <laughs> nope, she's fine. She's just as crazy as ever. Ah! It's cold. It's super cold. It's so cold, I think I might catch a cold. If you keep taking naps in places like this, I'm sure you will. What? I was asleep? Uh, I must have fainted again. I bet you were standing there staring at me, getting all excited, weren't you? No, Toko, I'm sorry. I might be a fucking degenerate, but I have my limits. No, I was not. Huh, then what? Hot and bothered? Straight up horny? Okay, so why did you pass out? I don't know. Last thing I remember is waking up just now. What'd you do to Miss Morose? Oh, that's right. Your memory stops and starts. Yeah, they don't share memories. They don't share memories. So, like, Genocide Jack doesn't remember what Toko remembers, and Toko doesn't remember what Genocide Jack remembers. That must be horrifying. Could you imagine if you have a split personality and you don't even know what happened? You just, like, go in and out, and you're in different places and different things all the fucking time. Bingo! Oh, she said Bazinga! Ugh, what is this fucking Big Bang Theory? Bazinga! Ugh, ugh, I, I, I don't like either of them. Uh, we, sh we share some basic knowledge, but our memories are very much separate. It's a blessing as far as I'm concerned. Even if she forgets something, I totally remember. So it's like double the memory. Eh, it's more like half, but whatever it is. I'm glad he's just thinking that in his head. Okay. But all I want to know right now is where my where is my little darling? Tell me now or I'll slit your throat. That's fucked up, Shin. 
I, you guys are fucked up. You guys are so swayed by personality and charisma that you forget that she literally ties up men and stabs them with scissors multiple times. What if they were like your friends and family members? You guys think that she's so good then? You guys just love her to death? Yeah, you know how many people she's- because she knows the ultimate murderous fiend. She's killed multiple and she does it because she thinks it's fun. She's fucked. I hate both of them. He's all by himself? Yeah, go kill Biakuya. He's a fucking asshole. I assume so. Oh, for sure. She's way more interesting than Toko. Oh my god, look at her face, dude. She got like the Orochimaru tongue. I knew it. I totally knew it. I'm a total pro when it comes to all things master. <laughs> Gotta go first. I can't imagine how lonely he must be right now. Toko shot off and her eerie laughter echoed behind her. I forgot to ask her about the picture. We for she was probably she was probably the only one willing to talk to us, and stupid ass Makoto forgot to show her the most important piece of evidence. Well, there's no point in asking Genocide Jack anyway. Yeah, you could have. But why did Toko faint? There's gotta be a reason. Well, I'm pretty sure it has to do with the body in the fridge. But I'm sure they were all shut tight the last time I was here. Yeah, remember the last time they were here, chat? All the freezer doors were shut. That must be why she passed out. Right. She faints so easily. Yo, Kyoko! How long you been here, girl? Kyoko! Makoto. It's getting late, isn't it? Uh, are you okay? Indeed. I'm sorry if I made you worry. No, no, you don't have to apologize. Listen. But listen, about this room. Yeah, it's... It's a morgue. Yeah. I suspected as much. A second. And Toko must have looked inside the fridge, seen what was in there, and then... Well, you have it. A second. Let me, uh... I'll lower the chat a little bit. I don't like how it's, like, pressed up against my face cam. Sorry. I'm really weird about layout stuff, but we should be chill now. Right. You knew she'd fainted? I was on my way here when Genocide Jack came running past me. I assumed she must have sneezed, but once I got inside, the real reason became clear. I imagine she came here to investigate, and when she opened the slot there, that's when she saw the body inside and dropped like a bag of rocks. Why's everything gotta be so difficult with her? <laughs> We should close it up. Don't want to leave it hanging open like that. Yeah, right? That's a little fucked up. Let's close it. Give me a hand with this. Just me and Kyoko stuffing the body back in the slot. That's it. But suddenly she stopped. Oh, no. She can't, she can't get enough of dead bodies, dude. What's wrong? Maybe we, yeah, see? Once she sees a dead body, she's got to, like, rub it and kiss it. She can't, like, ever leave it. How oh, come? Because Mukuro's body is in here. Mukuro's corpse? Mukuro's body is inside the fridge? I see. Just like every other time, the mastermind probably... Yo, thank you for the bits, guys. You guys are amazing. 100 bits for Hope and Kyoko. Thank you, thank you. Uh, the mastermind probably brought it up there while we were in the class trial. The mastermind did? Because they assumed we wouldn't be doing the class trial over again, I guess. So... Either way, now I can finally get a good look at the body. That's right, Kyoko didn't get a chance to look at the body during the last investigation. Yeah, remember she was up there using the Monokuma key to go in all the secret rooms and shit? She never got to investigate the body. So here we go! Makoto. I need to do my own examination of the corpse as soon as possible. I'm going to find a clue this time, and I'm going to grab the mastermind by the tail. Okay, so what should I do? So then. Why don't you just wait over there? I'll let you know as soon as I'm finished. Just wait over there, that's it? She's like, just stand there and, and don't bother me. Alright, we're just standing here. Let's just look at the uh, table. Alright, we're look at that. Okay. Kyoko's uh, tucked in the body, and we don't know what to do. Okay, we're just looking at the tarps. The same tarp that was in the garden. Okay, interesting. Same one that was in the bio lab. 
Cool, cool, cool. You done yet, Kyoko? You still feeling up the body? I should ask Kyoko about the group photo. Yeah, please, look at this, look at this. What, is, Kyoko's in it. You guys can't see because of my face cam, but Kyoko's in it. Her face is a little obscured, but you can. she's still in the picture. Uh, don't let me interrupt your investigation, but I wanted to talk to you about something. What is it? It's about that announcement Monokuma made earlier. You mean the one about a hint or something? I didn't take him up on the offer. Kyoko's the only smart one. If Monokuma invites you to the gym, why would you go? All he does is give you lies and deception. But everybody's like, <laughs> let's go. Because... The only reason he'd give us a hint at this point would be to confuse us, to cloud our judgment. Absolutely. Makes fucking sense. I can solve this mystery on my own without whatever hints he may have to offer. That's a good point. I wish I could go back and do the same thing, but what's done is done, I guess. Standing here, looking at her... Oh, shit. I got you. I didn't think she's hiding anything from me. I don't think she's hiding anything from me. Is she right? Did the mask man forge that picture as a trap to confuse us? It's gotta be it. There's no other explanation. Punishment time uh, bans you for an hour. If you redeem punishment time, you get banned for an hour. So. What is that? <laughs> hey, Parks. Shh, we're at the end of the end of the game. Wait, what, what, shit! I, I wasn't. I was distracted. What happened? What did Kyoko say? Something important? I want the photo. Fuck! Damn it! Kyoko, talk to me. I talked to her about the group photo. What happened here? It's about the announcement of Monokuma made earlier. The one about the hint. It didn't take him up on the offer. Standing here looking at her, I don't think she's hiding anything from me. Is she right? Did the mastermind forge that picture as a trap to confuse us? It's gotta be it. There's no other explanation. So when somebody's in the slot, a blue light's on. The number of lights that are on, including Mukuro's, there's nine lights on in total. Nine. Nine lights. Okay, Makoto, I'm done. Already? Jeez, that was fast. Anyone can do good work if they go slow. In that spirit, I'll make my report brief. I paid careful attention to the wounds and the traces of blood, and it seems likely that the stomach wound and blow to the back of the head were inflicted after death. Okay, so we just found out something important. In the Monokuma file, it stated that the cause of death was either the blow to the head or the knife. According to Kyoko's autopsy, the body was already deceased when both the blow to the back of the head and the knife through the body happened. The victim was already dead. Really? The burnt tissue made things a little difficult, but I'm completely confident in my findings. So that means neither of those were the fatal injury, right? Then what was the fatal injury? Due to the explosion, the victim's identity is unknown. They were, however, dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with the knife, which went completely through the body. It had also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. The body was covered in other wounds, but these were at least several days old. The only other option is those other wounds, but the file says that they were old. Is that right? Where does it say that they're old? Huh? Because... All the Monokuma file says is that they were inflicted at least several days ago. I guess I don't see the difference. 
Okay, wrong. The difference is immense, considering the impression they give. Listen. You seem to be equating several days old with simply old. However... But that doesn't quite follow logically. Old wounds. It makes it sound like they've been there forever. Like they're not related to the murder. Are you saying they are? But we all got the Monokuma file right after she was killed, right? So if the wounds were at least several days old, there's no way they could have had anything to do with it. So then. But what if Mukuro herself wasn't killed within the last few days? Oh shit! What if Mukuro wasn't killed within the last few days? What if she was killed before? What? What if Monokuma had killed Mukuro prior and nobody knew? At the very least. Certainly you can allow it as one of the many possibilities, can't you? One of many. Right. A detective doesn't have supernatural powers. There's no way to predict the answer from the beginning. Instead, the ideal detective begins by imagining as many possible scenarios as they can. They envision these possibilities without prejudice, without bias, using only their logic and common sense. As they investigate, they test what they uh, find against each of these possibilities. Okay. Kyoko's account. Okay, interesting. If there's anything like anything else you'd like to know about the condition of the body, now's the time. Come to think of it, there was one thing. Earlier when I was looking at Mukuro's profile, it listed her height and weight. So... 5 foot 7 inches, 97 pounds. Vitals were 31, 22, 32. Damn, you remembered all that? They are indeed consistent with the body. So there you guys go. I know a lot of people in the chat were like hesitant. They're like, I don't know if that was really Mukuro. Plot twist right here. That is 100% after the autopsy, the body of Mukuro Ikusaba. The ultimate despair, the the, the one with the mask, the, the hidden, that, that girl that we saw in the file, the ultimate soldier, turned ultimate despair. Uh, that was actually Mukuro. A lot of people were like, I don't know if it really was. I think Mukuro is still alive. Nope, that confirms it. Kyoko just did the autopsy and uh, Kyoko just did the autopsy and that was uh, Mukuro's body 100%. But what did we find in the locker? The headmaster wrote something saying that despair walks among us. There is a second despair. So even though Mukuro was the ultimate despair, there is evidence to prove that there is another ultimate despair and that Monokuma is one of us. Who is it? Is Monokuma Kyoko? Hina? Byakuya? Yasuhiro? Who is it? They are indeed consistent with the corpse. So then, indeed. don't forget about the Fenrir tattoo. There is absolutely no mistake. Indeed. Our victim in this case is, without a doubt, Mukuro Ikusaba. Well, there you go. There you go, theorists. That That is actually the body. So remember when Kyoko showed up and said, Mukuro Ikusaba, 16th student, the ultimate despair, watch out. She was already dead. She was already dead. There was no threat. Got fucking tricked. That's her. We barely knew her, Chet. And? That's all you wanted to ask? So then. then it looks like we have no further business with Mukuro's body. I wonder if I can find something really fast. Give me what, like two seconds here, Chet. Dang, I don't think I'll be able to find it easily. Let me search one more thing to try to find it. Yeah, I don't I don't think I'll be able to find it easily. Unfortunately, I'd have to like search for a while. I could check one more thing. One more thing, give me one second here. Don't worry guys, it'll, it'll... No, shit. Okay, well, I can't find it, but uh, if you're in our Discord, you can go check for yourself. I have been waiting to, to say this for a while because I thought it would be really funny. If any of you guys are in our Discord server, um, 
there's something that I was not able to say and nobody ever spoiled, but one of our emotes is just a huge fucking spoiler. Uh, yeah, one of our emotes is just a huge fucking spoiler in our Discord server. The emote's called Teehee, and it's of a girl laughing, and uh, that's just Mukuro the entire time. And if you don't know the proof, in the emote, you can actually see the Fenrir tattoo on her hand. So if you go to our Discord and use the Teehee emote, it's just a, a, an emote of Mukuro laughing, and on her hand is the Fenrir tattoo. So that's just a big fucking spoiler that we had, but nobody seemed to catch it. Uh, but now that we've revealed that she is dead, and uh, that she exists, there's no longer any reason to keep that a secret. But I always thought that that was funny, and how so many people used that emote not knowing that that was actually her, before you guys knew what she looked like. But that was her, and now she's dead, and now we have to find out who killed her. So there you go. Let's get going, it's kind of chilly in here. Are we not gonna put the body back? Don't you think it's kind of sad leaving it out like this? Why? Sad. Did you forget? She was our enemy once. A part of the ultimate despair. She didn't do nothing! We didn't even know that the first time we saw her, she was already dead! And then they, and she blew up! <laughs> she didn't do nothing to me! Maybe Toko has a right to be pissed because she got flown through the fucking air. Yeah, she's still a victim. I'm with Makoto on this one. Hey. Have you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? Yeah, but still. Ooh. You really are naive, you know that? It's really quite appalling. Appalling? That's such a... Okay. Jeez. She could have abandoned me, but she decided to help me instead. What does it mean to be naive? So then. I think we've done all we can do here. Back to our separate investigations, yes. But hold on. I still have one more thing to do. Something I need to talk to Kyoko about. Okay. Come on, Kyoko. Oh shit, yeah, remember? Remember we found that notebook? Remember Kyoko said, I haven't seen my dad in years, and then her dad was found dead and, and all this shit? Well, uh, remember we had a, we found a pocketbook with Kyoko's signature on it saying that she had had multiple discussions with her father? What the fuck was that about? I did have one last thing. I know I shouldn't, but I feel like I have to ask. What? Go ahead then. Out with it. How are you going to explain this one? Have you really not seen your dad even once since you got here? What? Uh-oh. So... What do you mean? Well, you know all those lockers on the second floor of the dorms? Indeed. But to get into any of the lockers, you need the handbook of whoever the locker belongs to. Actually, I managed to get them open using the emergency handbook. I see. And? Did you find anything worthwhile in the lockers? I found a pocketbook, and after looking through it... I think it must be your pocketbook. How would Kyoko's pocketbook end up in a sealed locker that she was never able to access unless she knows something that she's not telling us? Oh, look at her. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that fucking look. Why is that? What makes you say that? Because... Only the locker's owner should be able to get into it, right? I can't imagine those lockers belong to any of us. After all, we only got access to that area just recently. What I'm saying is there's no way I could have had access to any of those lockers. And if I did have a pocketbook, why would I bother putting it in a locker? Everything you just said makes perfect sense, but there's something written inside. Just a second, chat. Give me one moment. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Kept sounding like someone's knocking on my fucking door, but nobody was there. Like, I kept hearing, like, a knock every every now and then. I had to just check to make sure nobody was there. 
Kept sounding like someone kept knocking. I don't know what the hell that sound is. Whatever. I just, I just didn't know. I was like, there's no way that somebody's knocking once every minute on the minute. Just one knock, like... I mean, like, I can hear it, though. Whatever. Maybe it's just the house or the wind. I don't know. Whatever. I, it's not a ding. No, it wasn't a doorbell. It was like a knock on my bedroom door. It's, it must be just a sound. Nobody was out there, so... Whatever. Back to the game. Sorry about that. Had to check something. Had to check. It was about the headmaster. About your father. <gasps> oh, shit. That got her. Shh. If that's true. That video is real, too? Video? Makoto. Makoto? I think everything is finally starting to fit together to reveal a cohesive picture. Although, I'm afraid that picture might be worse than anything we could have imagined. Here we go, chat. The biggest plot twists are still to come. The two biggest plot twists of the game are yet to happen. What do you mean, Kyoko? I... I need to go investigate those lockers right now. I need to confirm what you said with my own two eyes. Let me give you the headmaster's handbook. That way you can... So... That won't be necessary. If I'm right about this, I shouldn't have any problem opening the locker with my own handbook. After all, it would seem that it's my locker. Your locker? Makoto. If you watch this, it'll all make sense. A DVD? And it says, Class of 78, Urgent Interviews. So... I found it in the hidden room after you left. Anyway. I don't have time to explain exactly what I think it means, so just watch it and see for yourself. I think you'll realize exactly what it means. You'll understand why you found my pocketbook in a place none of us have ever been before. None of this makes sense right now. But I guess that means there's some important clue on this DVD. Oh boy! Oh shit, dude! It's all going back to case one! Remember case one, where Monokuma gave us the DVDs? That was fucked up? It's all come back to yet another DVD. The interview DVD. Now it's my turn. Do you have a second to listen to me ramble? Kind of, Kyoko. We're, we're kind of strapped for time here. We're trying to get to the trial, but sure. In tell me, words. whatever. Turns out what? The arrangements I'd made didn't stick? What I mean is, I'm less sure of everything, even my own feelings. You're talking about your dad, right? I can never find the answers to the questions I wanted to ask for the rest of my life. All because of the mastermind. However... But there's one thing I am sure of. When it comes to the mastermind, there's no room in my heart for forgiveness. I... Okay. I swore to destroy the mastermind. One more reason to follow through. Kyoko's eyes burned with the fire of determination. The determination to defeat the mastermind. Hmm. It's strange to be confronted with his death and suddenly feel this way. I couldn't care less if my father had found happiness. What a fuck, damn it, see, that, what a, that's such a bitch statement. Why do you have to say that? The dude's already dead. I couldn't care less if my father had found happiness. Like, fuck off, dude. Why does it bother me so much to know how he suffered? Because you do care. Why don't you just admit it? For somebody who claims that they're so smart, such a great detective, you don't even know how your own mind works. There's no understanding it. She let out a small laugh as she said it. But her smile was filled with sorrow. <sighs> well, Kyoko, if you want to see how your father died, go watch part one of the Milky Finisher playthrough of Danganronpa. Okay. You're right. Hey. Keep this in mind. There's only ever one absolute truth. Whether that truth serves justice or suffering. Whether it's the greatest truth or the worst. What do you mean? Makoto. Even if the truth you uncover is filled with hopelessness, you still can't give up hope. Absolutely not, because all I can do is keep moving forward. It's pretty much all I'm good at. <laughs> Damn, she agreed? Sorry if that was strange. So then. See you at the class trial! See you too! Later! Okay, let's keep going. Let's just see what's on the fucking DVD. All right, go. Shut up. Let's get the DVD. Go, go, go. We can't lose. 
What the fuck was on this DVD that made so much sense that made Kyoko freak out? You know if it makes Kyoko freak out, it's gonna be something big. So we gotta go to the, the, the video room. God, it feels like such a long time ago. Remember when we watched Sayaka's video and then all the Sayaka's friends were dead and then we watched our video and it was our family's house getting smashed up and shit. Oh, good times, good times. Now we're about to uh, see what's on there. I know, Sayaka, dude. Things were simpler back then. When it was just Sayaka was dead. Now things are a little more complicated than we ever had previously expected. Alright. Video room, here I come. Kyoko's fucking boss. She's something. Kyoko's like the opposite of like the type of girl that I would like. Cause Kyoko's like very like how do I what's the word I'm looking for? Kyoko's very like I don't want to just say intelligent, because that's stupid. She's like... She's very, like, book smart. Kyoko's very book smart and intelligent and, 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 and knows about, like, psychology. But when it comes to emotions and feelings, she's very shallow. She doesn't, like, ever talk about things she loves or is passionate about. Everything's factual, to the T, like, boom, boom, boom. Where the type of girl that I would like is, like, stupid, but is super passionate, you know? Doesn't know how to figure out math problems, but can tell you about like her favorite shows and music and food all the time. So that's that's why Kyoko kind of, you know, a little, a little too cold, too, a little too robotic for me sometimes. I mean, she's definitely the most useful asset we have right now, assuming that she's on our side. All right, but anyways, let's play this DVD. You guys ready for this? You guys are not fucking ready for this DVD. Shh. This should be able to play DVDs just fine. Well then, uh, let's go see what's on the DVD. Boop. I took the DVD Kyoko gave me and put it in the player. It said that it was playing, but nothing appeared on the screen. I stared into the black of the monitor. It must have been only a few seconds. But to me, it felt like an eternity. And then, all of a sudden, an image appeared. <gasps> Sayaka? Oh, shit! Nani? This fucking music is so good. Shh. It took me by total surprise. I hadn't seen Sayaka in who knows how long, and there she was. Okay then, oh shit, are you ready to begin? Shh. The voice I heard was of the man positioned on the side of the screen. It was the voice of a middle-aged man. Who's the only middle-aged man that we know? Who's the only middle-aged man in his late 30s that we know? Kyoko's father, the headmaster of Hope's Peak, there he is. Is the audio good for you guys? Can you hear this? I hope. I never really got the hang of taking notes while having a conversation. It sounded like he was trying to make a joke, but Sayaka's tense face didn't move a single millimeter. So this video is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's more like insurance. So please don't worry too much. Oh shit, dude, here it comes! There is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school? Can you accept that? Can you accept that? Sayaka was obviously at a total loss. 
it made total sense. Who would agree to spending the rest of your life in this school? She accepted! What? Thank you. And I'm sorry about all this. Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to keep you safe. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, I give you my word. To keep you safe? As if on cue, that was where the video cut out. There was a lot I hadn't understood up till now, but this, only this, I simply couldn't comprehend what I'd heard. Because I know how much Sayaka wanted to get out of here. I know how much she wanted to escape and pursue her dreams with her friends again. She wanted that so bad, she tried to frame me for murder. So why? Why would she say yes to living here for the rest of her life? As I sat there thinking about it, I noticed a sudden light. On the monitor, the video that I thought was finished flashed back on screen. My eyes darted back to the screen. And if I was confused before, what I saw next pushed me right over the edge. Oh! <laughs> it's Makoto! It's him! He saw himself on the fucking screen! Oh, second, I gotta text a second. Give me one second. I'll be right, right back. I'm back. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. All right. Shh. All right. We're here. We're here. We're here. Sorry. I, that, I know that was a really bad. That was a really really bad time to walk away. But we're back. We're back. We're back. Back. Sorry. So he he thought the video was over, and then it comes back on, and now it's Makoto on the screen. Makoto's like, huh? What I saw was me. Impossibly, undeniably me. Me and the headmaster were looking at each other. He and I were having what seemed like a fairly normal conversation. But I, the I in here right and now, had absolutely no memory of it. I had no memory of even meeting the headmaster, much less sitting down to talk to him like this. Makoto, there's a chance you may have to spend the rest of your life in the school. Can you accept that? Can you accept that? Yes. Oh, <laughs> shit. This can't be real. I said yes? I'm sorry I'm putting you through all this. Well, I mean, we don't have much of a choice, do we? We don't have much of a choice, do we? But I promise that as long as you're in this school... I will do everything I can to protect you. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, that's the very least I can do for you. Once again, the video cut out. From there, the video repeated the same scene again and again with the others. Look at... Byakuya! <laughs> Byakuya! Ace, you missed so you missed you missed it so much. I can't be bothered to tell you all the things. Toko! Hina! Everyone. They all said that they agreed to live in this school forever. They all accepted it! The headmaster asked them. Are you okay with staying here for the rest of your life? And they all said yes. So why is it that they don't remember? And why is it that they have literally killed each other to try to escape when apparently they agreed to it themselves? 
and then. <gasps> oh, <laughs> Kyoko! Her interview with him had been recorded just as clearly. Without a doubt, she had met him. She'd sat down with the headmaster of Hope Speak Academy, her father. And when he asked her his question, she answered the same as everyone else. She accepted a life within the school. Just as Kyoko's interview was wrapping up, the monitor suddenly went black. Huh? It wasn't just the monitor. The DVD player itself had apparently turned off, which of course meant that the DVD wasn't playing anymore. What happened? Oopsie, looks like it broke. Out of service. It just happened to break now. Now then, why? When does it matter? Failure can strike anywhere, anytime. That's what failure is, right? Failure, my ass! You cut the power on purpose! Well, whatever. Chat. The Hope's Peak headmaster, Kyoko's dad, said... If you agree to stay in this school forever, I will do my best to protect you. So what the fuck happened where he ended up dead and Monokuma was in the school? What the fuck happened? I don't know. Let's find out. We didn't see Mukuro's tape. What did she say? Did she agree to it? We don't know. All that matters is that she's dead now. And yeah, and protect them from what? Each other? I couldn't help myself. I let out a huge, exasperated sigh, but as I did, I remembered something. That's right. I fainted too, and when I woke up, I noticed a strange feeling of separation within myself, a disconnect. It would seem... Thinking back on it now, at that point, my memory was gone. At that time, I'd forgotten. I couldn't remember why I'd come to the school, and I couldn't remember what my ultimate ability was. But what would make you forget all that? Hey. Hmm. A convenient outcome. Something that seemed to obviously work in favor of the mastermind. Does that mean I've lost my memory too? What about the others? Have we all forgotten? Or... Ace, remember what we said. Monokuma has to be one of us. Because oh, there was only ever 16 people. There was the 15 characters and Mukuro. So, the person controlling Monokuma is a student. But who? The end is only the beginning. Anyway, let's get started. The beginning of the end of the class trial. Everyone gather once again at you know where. <laughs> this is it. The fight. This is it. This is the end. We have to walk into Monokuma's room. Not only do we have to prove that Monokuma killed Mukuro, we have to prove that. We also have to unveil the mystery of the school right now. Do you think we have enough evidence for that? Either way, time has run out. It's time. This is it. The final showdown between hope and despair. The last time all of our lives will be on the line. The last time our hope and despair are on the line. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. Okay then. This is the end. 
This is it! This is it! Open the door! I, I guess I'm the first one this time. Makoto. You're early, Makoto. Listen. Does that mean you feel prepared? Yeah, for now at least. But where's everyone else? Why aren't they here yet? Don't worry, I'm sure they'll be here soon. And just like she said, there they all pop up like weasels. Byakuya! Byakuya? They arrived one after another. But they were all in the same state of shock. Hina? Hero? Silence. And it wasn't any normal silence. It was the deafening silence of fear and suspicion. It was like the first class trial. You called for me and so I appear. Okay. We got one person talking at least. <laughs> I'm on fire. Strong silent master, so wonderful, so cool, so hot, my loins are ablaze. Now listen, everything will be just fine if you leave it to me. My scissors. With my scissor sharp scissors in hand, I'll stab and gouge the shiv of the master of evil. But you couldn't kill anybody but adorable little boys. <laughs> don't say anything, Rainbow Kappa. Don't say anything. We'll find out. If it's what master wants, it can be boy, girl, anything in between. I can handle it. And she sneezed. And now it's Toko again. <laughs> Where am I? Oh, we're about to do the last class trial, Toko. Look at Yoko! Look at this roast! No human language can describe the disappointment I'm feeling right now. Damn, what a shit! <laughs> Is everyone here? Oh, and wearing our gloomy Gus faces, I see. Well, okay, well then, let's begin. Trails, trails, this final clash trial is gonna be slathered in pitch black despair. Climaxium sorrow. That's fine. This is the final clash trial, and this time it'll be fair. What do you mean this time? Stop with all the slander. I'm a bear in good standing, you know. There was a Mr. Fair Guy Universe contest. I take home the tiara every year. I'm gonna win this game super fair and square. And I'll make sure everyone watching at home knows, that's you guys, Chet, that despair is mightier than the hope. Enough of your tedious drivel. Begin the trial already. I'll be waiting for you down below. So don't try and run away. <laughs> Laughing as loud as ever, Monokuma disappeared. Well, whatever. In the name of my family. All right. Let's get on the elevator. You guys are dicking around too long. They're all acting odd. Like they're paranoid, suspicious of each other. However, but you know why that is, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Why do you guys think everybody's acting weird, chat? Give me your theories below. Why is everybody acting weird not talking to each other? I'm ready. So... Ready to win, right? Let's do it. <laughs> Alright, cool. Step after step toward that gaping maw. I'd resolved that this would be the last time. Chad, this is it! This is the last time we ever have to go in this elevator. Are we ever gonna make it out? Is this where Makoto's journey ends? This trial? I repeated to myself that there was no fear, no mystery left. I pushed the anxiety down, calming my trembling body. And finally, on steady legs. No predictions, no predictions. It's gonna be soon. No predictions. I passed the threshold and stood in the elevator. Without warning, it began to descend. Deeper and deeper. Deeper, deeper, deeper still. Deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. <laughs> I closed my eyes and sight fell away. 
and sound too disappeared. Alone in the universe, I waited for the elevator doors to open for the last time. What could have uh, been seconds or centuries later? I felt the gentle vibration of the elevator come to an end. I slowly opened my eyes. Oh my gosh, look at how, look how fucked up the trial looks now! Is this the final trial site? What do you think? Isn't it just the perfect background for deciding a person's fate? It's the long-awaited last stage. The always exciting final boss battle. This is it. And I'm gonna sit in on this one. Just sit right here in the vacant 16th seat. Oh shit! So for the first time ever, Monokuma's gonna participate! Monokuma is participating in this trial, chat. Holy shit. To refute evidence with us. Well then, let's begin! You wanna save the data? Oh shit! Yeah, let's go! Let's go! It's the end! Oh, I didn't hit- I hit- don't save. Fuck me. Well, um, now is a perfect time as any to take my fast bathroom break. If you guys are watching this via the VOD and not live, I'm gonna end part one here, and then, uh, I'm gonna make the next part till the end, the second to last part. Because this ended up being pretty long, so this is gonna be about a 45 minute part. But I gotta go to the bathroom. When we return for you live viewers out there, it's the end of the game. So don't go anywhere, I gotta go to the bathroom, and then it's buckle up till the finale. All right, so just two minute break, take a piss, and then when we come back, we gotta take the piss out of the mastermind. All right? This is it. We in the end game now, ladies and gentlemen.